Hey, what's up? This is John Baisley. This is Dick Jost. We're from Baroness, and you are watching Records in My Life. something that the concept or the philosophy about how the record was made. Like Nick said, we, we started with ideas and we would only spend you know, two days of very intense focused investigation into that music. I mean, primarily jamming. We chose a place that was outlanging in this with very little distractions and no you know, commerce or neighbors or anything like that. And so it was a, you know, it was a cool process where we, got, as Nick said, we got to, we got to turn ideas into songs in a, in a very cool sort of isolated like hermetically sealed petri dish it was a, it was a, it's a very cool way and i think a way to, to write a record i think it's something that we really thrived with and the art we are work on the record it's, it was stunning Can you tell me a bit about it yeah so i did the album cover and the yeah. layout uh, and we had we worked with we worked with uh, one other artist who did the when I saw the cover, it's like at the high, at the high res um, from the publicist, and I was just like, stunning, beautiful uh, cover. It was like, kudos. It was really. Yeah, I mean, fantastic. I think a lot of times with the Baroness covers, I feel like I get lucky because when the process is over and I look back on it and things make a certain sort of sense, or there's a balance, there's a composition uh, that, that mirrors or. Uh, lifts up the music a little bit more. I'm always surprised because it feels, it feels very much like both musically and artistically and, and visually when, I, when, when we walk into these projects, I think it's important, I think it's important for us not to, not to consider too precise or articulate an end goal so that we can be surprised along the way. Thank you again for being on records in my life, guys. It's, uh, <laughs> it's a pleasure to have you here after all that, but which records you're pouring Baroness which records must you like to join our band? Well, I don't think we would ever be able to join a band together because all four of us. <laughs> but that's, that's, the like, beauty, that's the beauty of my question because you can say, like, well, okay, so in order to ask your question, I'm going to answer, <laughs> I'm going to ignore your question. I'm going to say that I think, I think the more, honestly, like genuinely, I think the more important connective tissue is that you have to have an appreciation for a fairly broad scope of music while recognizing that. Baroness plays inside, you know, inside the lines of I am on rock and whatever. Uh, there, there are a few bands that we all come together on, of there course, you know, so like, they may not be, they <laughs> may not be the most fundamentally important bands for, for our style. But inspiring. I think one of them, absolutely one of the most important bands ever to the existence of, the, the, the reality and existence of this band is Nirvana. The, the band offered a turning point in my life, musically speaking. The moment they came into existence, and the moment that music, I heard that music, it was the first time for me that I'd ever felt music speak to me. I was, I was 12 years old when the, when the Smells Like Spirit debuted on MTV, and I, I saw the debut. It was not a small moment in my life. It was probably that, you know, you're going to take the left or right path kind of thing, for me, personally speaking, you know. So that music is always been something of a like a critical and, and primary part of my musical DNA. You mentioned ACDC as well. Is there, is there an ACDC record which you yeah. back in black? Back in, I mean, back in black, we did some uh, comes on the van pretty frequently. A, a record that maybe is a good one for where we're at right now. I know. I'm sure all four of us agree on this, is a uh, Keith Jarrett Cohen concert. That, just like the spirit of that and how those songs kind of unfold, I think is in line with kind of how we write and definitely was like influenced, I know, like the both of us, for sure, just on how he like compositionally like, 
holds those ideas throughout those songs and you're just making it up as you're going along. I don't know if my process is an obvious question, but touring like constantly, what's it, what, what do you like to listen to? What record, like last night or the night before in the tour bus, you kind of wind down and fall asleep? What's, what record would you listen to after a I'm listening to Duke Ellington at a concert of sacred music right now, which is really, really amazing. And I was I had a moment with it last night where I was like, this feels like music that's like falling through space somehow. I don't know how he did that. I know it's like some really stony thing to say, no. but but it really like it's like how do you capture this feeling? This I don't know the whole concert. Well, for me, it's like my my go to is typically uh, Beethoven uh, piano sonatas. Terrific! I'm going to give you a, a synopsis here from a film, School of Rock. I, I, I'm sure you guys have seen that movie. <laughs> what record do you send the kids home with to inspire them? For me, it's always been like a, a handful. Of, there's a handful of bands that I think put out groundbreaking music, great energy, great you know, great enthusiasm, great passion, great songwriting, great complexity. Wish You Were Here by Floyd. It's, um, I don't know, any anything from the early to mid period of Radiohead, um, which has always been hugely, hugely inspirational to me. I mean, it, I think In Rainbows is one that, that you know, Nick and I have certainly tripped out on quite a bit. Uh, in, the, in the basement sessions, uh, that video is like, if that doesn't sell you on them as like one of the greatest set of composing musicians on the planet, I don't know. I don't think we disagree on think uh, A Sun That Never Says was a record by uh, Ben Cornelius was, was really impactful for me uh, as well as earlier. You know, like you said, but, uh, those, were, those were big record moments for me. Uh, Danger Nation, Sonic Youth, the whole back catalog with Rock Redhead, all the Nirvana stuff, all the Clash stuff. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's just, there's some, it's more like the bands. It's just the bands that have the right attitude. You can't really like, you can't really see it necessarily in one way. Vengeance. 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 Tragedy, Vengeance. Queen, A Night at the Opera. Yeah, they were. Yeah. Um, Ahmad Jamal, Light of Purging. And then the Sugar Ops and Poor Love. So we'll cover quite a bit of. <laughs> Quite a bit of like attitude and compositional prowess in, in my my book. Terrific. Um, if, this is a tough question. If you could be a fly on the wall for any recording session, which would it be? Um, I would love to watch and witness Gillian Ross and Dave Rawlings. They're two of my favorite musicians of all time. I'd probably take more from their songwriting as a lyricist than just about anywhere else. Uh, and I've seen them perform, I'm friends with them, but I have never witnessed what happens when you're in the studio and they're making that, that sort of magical music. Fly uh, on the wall. I mean, The Louse in the Crematorium is one of my all time favorite records. That was definitely a moment for me in high school seeing that. And I've like since met John Theodore and talked to him a little bit about the making of that. But I think how they put all that together in a little bit. And they also seem like the characters, you know. <laughs> yeah. So yeah you know. We were talking earlier about kids. I mean, um, I have an eight year old son and I'm starting to build him a record collection. And this is the question for both of you. What what's the first record I buy for him? I my answer is always gonna be Nirvana, never mind, because when I was at an adolescent age, it cut straight through all of my like corporate music armor and sure. it just it just touched it touched me and changed the course of my life for, for better or worse but it did you know so that's that's always been the answer. Fantastic. Yeah I mean I bought my nephew Queen Night at the Opera was the first record I bought my nephew. But yeah that and when I was around that age I think Empire of the Sun Oh, right. 
And that was like the coolest shit I've ever heard in my life. Like, you can't believe how many people. Honestly, this being a great guys, we water or wine to listen to or write. We do. Coffee with an artist, alive or dead. And and we are, we you want the artist? Yeah. Who would you want to have a coffee with? You could be dead or alive. Or money. Gil Evans. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm glad about your turn. <laughs> I got thrown off by something like a thing. Song was like a record of your high school years. Nirvana, never mind. It's just a little bit down in toxicity. Words of wisdom for your fans and our audience. Be nice to each other. Keep it simple and stupid. Fantastic. Guys, thanks so much. Glass, I, it was great. I mean, you, you referenced so many great records. Thanks so much for watching Records in My Life. I'm Charles Brownson, your host. This show would be nothing without you guys, so please leave a comment or subscribe, and this season you have a chance to win a record from your favorite band.